We are joined tonight by Jamie and Lily of Spread Cheese Co., a boutique cheese shop right across the street from Wesley and RJ Julia in Main Street Market. I'll let them tell you a little bit more about the history of the shop, but they are a very welcome addition to Main Street Middletown. Tonight, using the book American Cheese by Joe Berkowitz, they put together a gorgeous custom tasting platter to teach us a little bit about our favorite dairy byproduct. If you haven't already purchased the book and want to learn even more, link to purchase is in the chat or come visit us in Jamie and Lily on Main Street. We are all open for business. And now Jamie, Lily, over to you. Okay, welcome everybody and thank you so much for joining us. This is our very first cheese and book pairing and we are so excited. We're so excited to have so many of you join us here tonight. So I'm Jamie. I am one of the owners of Spread. My sister Lindsay and I opened Spread back in November of 2019 out of our love for food and obviously especially our love for cheese. My personal journey with cheese started nearly six years ago when my husband Scott and I discovered the Centerbrook Cheese Shop. And we would make bi-weekly trips to fulfill my fantasies of trying to sample every single cheese that they had to offer. And at that time, there was well over 100 of them. Before Centerbrook, I was, as Joe Berkowitz would describe in the book, living a basic ass cheese life. I would stock up on all those prepackaged cheeses from Stu Leonard's and I would only occasionally dabble in the world of flavored cheddar. That all changed after my first experience in going to a cheese shop. So not only was I able to go and sample a plethora of cheeses that I had never even heard of before, but I was able to learn about them too. In early 2019, I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that I wanted to bring the joy of cheese to Middletown. And so with very little convincing needed, I got my sister Lindsay on board and we opened Spread. Our sole purpose of tonight's event is to get you all exceptionally excited about cheese. And yes, we understand that most people in general are excited about cheese, but we want to really enlighten you on all the behind the scenes stuff. So we wanna introduce you to the creameries, the production processes, and all the little stories behind every piece of cheese that's sitting on your tasting plate. So with that said, I would like to introduce you to Lily Orr, She's our shop manager and she's going to kick tonight's tasting off. All right. Hi everyone, I'm Lily Orr. I grew up in what they call the quiet corner of Connecticut in Thompson um, on a dairy farm. So starting at a very, very young age, I was helping my parents feed and milk cows, work the lands all seasons of the year. And believe me, all times of the day, I'm talking like 12 a.m. milking, 6 p.m. feedings and everything in between. So I've been exposed to various forms of agriculture my whole life working in and out of the industry, um, but my heart always comes back to dairying. You could say milk pretty much runs through my veins at this point. Um, and to me, the art of cheese making is underappreciated and is something that I think will be lost to antiquity unless the skills and knowledge are actively passed down. So here I am today to help excite my fellow cheese lovers and help further your understanding of the American cheese industry. So this is a quote from the book, um, cheese is a party, everyone's always invited to, no RSVP required, come hungry. And this is a quote that I love because cheese is something that everyone should be able to enjoy. It's something just so basic yet so complex at the same time. So Joe Berkowitz, the author of this book, was just your typical New York City journalist that knew almost nothing about cheese until he experienced an artisanal tasting that made him realize the depth and complexity complexity of this immortal version of milk. The culture, the history, the expertise that goes into making every single wedge of cheese that you see just on your typical grocery store shelf. For those of you who did not do their homework, here's a brief synopsis of the book. So Joe takes us on a journey to cheese nirvana with him, from being a layman to, dare I say, an expert. Cheese making has deep roots in other parts of the world, but to America, it's quite new. Just like many other trades, crafts, and customs here, cheese making is not really any different. So American cheesemakers have truly caught up to their European masters. 
and they had done so in an unbelievably brief period of time. As cheese lovers in the 21st century, we are very fortunate to be able to taste the domestic cheeses that not only emulate the European classics, but also reflect the unique terroir of the American landscape. We have only become this lucky thanks to talented spearheaders who dared to rebel against the processed products that overtook the American kitchens in the 1950s. I'm talking about that plastic wrapped craft orange cheese. <laughs> so we can thank cheesemakers like Dave Gremmels of Rogue Creamery, Mike Gindrich of Uplands Cheese, Matteo and Andy Keller of Jasperville Farm, the OG goat ladies, Mary Keene and Allison Hooper, and then various other social media influencers like Erica Kubik, Madame Fromage, and Adam Moskowitz for this American cheese renaissance that we've been experiencing since the 90s. So although there is no real definitive era in which cheese was dis first discovered, the most agreed upon theory is that a merchant traveling across the Gobi Desert on Camelback used a sheep's stomach as his thermos to carry milk. My first thought in the desert is not to drink some milk, but that was his. <laughs> so the sheep's stomach carries this enzyme called rennet, just as all ruminants do, so like cows and anything, um, and that helps coagulate milk. So between the rennet, the heat from the sun, and the camel's movement through the journey, the milk separated into curds, and well, he was just hungry and weird enough to take a bite. <laughs> and I'm so thankful he did because from there through immigration, emigration, exploration, war, crusades, etc., the discovery of cheese expanded worldwide and each culture and civilization created their own recipes and essentially the taste of place. But how do you describe the taste of place when you eat cheese? So back to Jamie for a little language arts lesson. <laughs> All right. If you read the book, you now understand that cheese people will choose their words very wisely when describing a cheese. So for instance, a word like sharp does not do a cheese justice because the word sharp can mean so many different things to different people, right? But if you hear a word like tangy or raisiny or toasted caramel, now those kind of words will put your taste buds on notice. In chapter six of the book, Joe visits the Cheesemonger Invitational in San Francisco. And it was here that he overheard a cheesemonger describe a pairing of a Belgian, I want to say farmhouse saison and a telegio in three words. It was sourdough apple pancake. And that has to be by far one of the best ways I've personally heard somebody describe a cheese. And that's what we're looking for. We want to create an experience before you actually get that cheese into your mouth. So on the next slide here, I'm not going to read every word that's on it, but this is just going to give you an idea of the adjectives that we use here to describe the appearance, aroma, and flavor of cheese. And as you can see, there's a, a whole bunch of different ones there. And Lily actually made this for the shop and we keep it posted in our back room. So this always stays at the top of mind so our cheesemongers can provide our customers with the most meaningful experience every time they come into the shop. So now that we've covered the lingo, let's uh, move on here to the portion of the event that you've all been waiting for, the tasting. So, this slide uh, just kind of gives a brief overview of how we recommend performing the pairing in order for you to have the most meaningful experience. First, you are going to smell the cheese. And this is really just gonna allow you to, you know, get to meet the cheese. We want you to really try and identify any specific aromas you're getting. So close your eyes and do this. When you meet that first cheese, close your eyes, smell it and see what aromas you're picking up on. Next, you're going to taste the cheese by itself. And you're gonna chew the cheese, you're gonna let it sit in your mouth and warm up a little bit, but you're not gonna swallow it right away. So let it sit on your palate and see what kinds of flavors you start to pick up on. Next, which is our personal favorite part of the pairing, is actually pairing the cheese with a recommended accompaniment. So we strategically picked little side items to pair with each one of these cheeses that pair exceptionally well you're going to be completely surprised to see how a little drizzle of honey or a crunch of a nut will completely enhance and add to the complexity of the cheese. 
And lastly, we've provided some little toast points. So you're gonna use these to cleanse your palate in between each tasting. So now, the tasting plate that we prepared for you featured cheeses from American dairy farms that were featured in the book, American Cheese. Um, so I'm just gonna go around here and you guys can look at your cheeses. We've actually labeled everything and numbered them in the order that we'll be um, sampling them tonight. And we're gonna start, the lineup goes as follows with the little black cup that's got the cream in it. That is mascarpone from Vermont Creamery of Vermont. And this will be paired with a local honey from Bee Haven Apiaries of Tallinn, Connecticut. Next up is Moses Sleeper. This is from Jasper Hill in Vermont, and we're going to pair this cheese with a spicy pickled carrot. Third is the Humboldt Fog. We're going, um, that cheese comes from Cypress Grove in California, and we're going to pair it with dry pear and also a drizzle of the honey if you would like. Next is the Moon Rabbit Cheddar. That comes from Deer Creek in Wisconsin, and that cheese is going to get paired with a slice of orange zest fig salami. And lastly is the Rogue Creamery Smoky Blue Cheese. And we're gonna pair that with a chocolate covered hazelnut from Oregon. And at this point, I am going to turn it back over to Lily. And I think we're going to, um, at this point, also unmute you guys so that you can actually partake in the tasting and give your feedback um, and chime in as you would like. So Lily's gonna take it away and she's gonna guide you through the tasting of the luscious and decadent mascarpone from Vermont Creamery. Yeah, so as Jamie said, the mascarpone is in that black little cup that you got. Um, the local honey is also in another little black cup. So Vermont Creamery was started in 1984 by Alice Hooper, which is an OG goat lady, um, and Bob Reese. So Alice learned cheesemaking during an internship in France, and then when she came back to the United States, landed in Vermont. And she got asked one night by a chef um, who was preparing a dinner that was focused all around local products there in Vermont to make a goat cheese. And so she whipped one up really quick for the event and everyone loved it so much that by the end of the event, they were asking, where the hell can I get some more? So that night, Vermont Creamery was born and Chev and uh, Cow's Milk Creme Fresh was their first products ever made and sold under the name Vermont Creamery. Then in 1991, they became the first producer ever in the United States to make an Italian cream cheese, mascarpone, which is what we're tasting tonight. So now Vermont Creamery makes multiple different types of cultured creams, cultured butter, aged and fresh cheeses. They get their cow's milk from this cooperative called St. Albans Cooperative Creamery, um, which was started in 1919 and to this day has over 350 family farms involved in that cooperative. And then they get their goat's milk from this place called Ayers Brook Goat Dairy, which is actually an experimental goat dairy that a lot of cheesemakers can get milk from this place and try to test out like new recipes or like if they want to tweak existing ones. So now we'll get to the good stuff, to the actual tasting of it. So we'll start out on our sweet tooth tonight with this decadent mascarpone paired with the local honey. So mascarpone, AKA Italian cream cheese, you can kind of use that interchangeably is more akin to like a sour cream or creme fraiche than a cheese itself. But because it is not cultured with bacteria and instead coagulated by an acid such as vinegar or tartaric acid or citric acid, just as a rennet would coagulate your typical cheeses. And it is partially drained, so it is thicker than just like a cream. Um, it is indeed part of the cheese family. So now you can take a utensil and just dive on into the mascarpone. This cheese has a mildly sweet and almost nutty flavor with like a fresh buttery character. It's not very tangy, but you still get that nice lactic note. It's rich and creamy, um, but it is able, it's very um, uh, able to go into different dishes like a sweet or a savory dish. So here we decided to go the sweet route and pair it with the local honey. So try a little bit of it by itself. And as Jamie said, like smell it first. Mm, it's, oh, it smells so good. <laughs> it's, it smells like almost floral to me. So try it by itself. It's very rich, decadent, creamy, almost buttery. And then try it with a little bit of honey. And the honey adds this really nice little like floral sweet character to it. And kind of like almost tricking you into thinking that there's vanilla in there. 
And so what I think of when I try this tasting is like a vanilla shortbread filling. So even though there's no actual like biscuit pieces in here, to me, it tastes like something that does. So does anyone have any comments about what they taste, what they sense? Tasting is very individual. So what I say that I taste and I smell and everything, you may not, or you may taste something completely different. So, you know, it's a very open conversation. And what's really fun is doing a blind tasting where you're not giving anybody any sense of what it tastes like or smells like, and then have them tell you what they're picking up on. All right, so we will move along and we will talk about Moses Sleeper next. All right, so Moses Sleeper is our next cheese. It's another soft and like creamy cheese, um, but here we go for a more like pecan approach than a sweet. So this is from Jasper Hill Farm up in Vermont and it was bought by Andy and Matteo Keller in the late 90s. And since then they have created some of the most renowned cheeses here in America. They were just two brothers looking for some meaningful work in a place that they loved, but the area had a dying dairy industry. So they knew the only way to make their dreams of dairy farming work was to make a value added product. So, you know, transforming a raw material into something that would be more valuable at a market. So they took up cheese making. Through lots and lots of hard work and time and money investments and help from their friends down the road at Cabot Creamery, uh, Jasper Hill has grown into the huge enterprise that it is today. So not only do they make their own cheeses, but they also work with other cheese makers and even import products and have this whole cellar system where they participate in the practice of affinage, which is like the aging of cheese um, through its process. So from Jasper Hill today, we are tasting the Moses Sleeper named after a revolutionary war scout. And because Jasper Hill is very, very proud of their roots in Vermont, they name all of their cheeses after some historical event or a historical person. And so the Moses Sleeper is a soft ripened bloomy rind cheese. A bloomy rind cheese gets its name from the mold used in the production process. So the two that are typically used are called Penicillium Candidum and Geotrichum Candidum. Um, those are added into the milk either during the culturing process or just sprayed on during the affinage process, which is the aging. Um, so this is what helps break down the milk components in the cheese and create the soft cheese, which is like typical of like a camembert or a brie. That's why all of those have those nice like white rinds to them. So if you walked into an aging room full of bloomy rind cheeses, it would just look like a bunch of little dandelion heads everywhere. So that's where the bloomy comes from. It's all these wispy white filaments that are sticking up from the rind. And these get patted down actually through like flipping and turning of the cheeses over the few weeks that they get aged. And that's what creates a nice white rind that we see on the cheeses. So we decided to pair uh, the Moses Sleeper with spicy pickled carrots. And this is called a contrasting pairing. So if you remember in the book, Joe talked about a complementary versus a contrasting pairing where you do complementary would be like a sweet and sweet um, and the contrasting is something where like here we have a very creamy cheese with like a nice acidic carrot. So um, take a whiff of the cheese, you get this really nice mushroomy aroma to it, um, which again is very typical of these types of cheeses that are aged in this way. And then take a bite and let your mouth explode with flavors of cauliflower, creme fraiche, almost like toasted nuts. So go ahead and do that. I already sampled my <laughs> <laughs> And then after you do that, then you can just take your carrot. Mine is like oozing out all over my plate, my cheese. It's so warm right now. Um, so you can just take your carrot and dump it right into that nice gooey paste that is just oozing out. And just watch the acidity like counteract that creaminess and mushroominess in like the most pleasant way. And to me, this is something that tastes like a uh, banh mi sandwich. Cause you get that nice banh mi that has like the mayonnaise and then like all the pickled vegetables and it just, that's what this tastes like. <laughs> and this is a good representation. So we always tell people, and we told you guys when you picked up your plates to let them sit out for a while and warm up before you go to enjoy them because cheese really tastes its finest at room temperature and especially a cheese like Moses Sleeper. If you were to eat this cold, you really wouldn't get hit with those really intense <laughs> flavors of the cauliflower and the mushroom. So this is, having it at room temperature is absolutely ideal. That's how you want to try it. 
So we do have a question from Lauren. Um, I'm going to ask her to unmute and, and ask her a question. Um, it's kind of less of a question, more of a comment. Hmm. But um, I did like when I was smelling it while you're describing it, I did pick up like, like hay, like fresh hay, like kind of grassy, which is uh, or like um, vegetable-y really fresh, which is why I was like, oh, yeah, that's why you said, um, like, cauliflower. Yep. Yeah, it has a um, nice vegetal aroma. Yeah, um, but, like, and also, like, the cheese tasting, it, it, it reminds me of, like, when you do, like, blind scents, and you can't pick up on it until somebody tells you what the scent is. Like, our scent recognition is, like, really poor, in terms of like naming what the scent is um so i think that's like something that's really cool that that uh, like professional tasters have developed <laughs> yeah yeah there's a whole language out there for talking about cheese and probably just about like you know like sommeliers with wine like go through yeah. years, and years and years of testing and studying mm -hmm. before they can even get like certification so there is like certification for cheese too like you can become an, an a certified cheese professional and like go through basically a sommelier you know course <laughs> yeah. wow. really we're not there yet <laughs> someday we, we just like <laughs> eating the cheese and talking about it <laughs> casually <laughs> What an interesting pairing to like, I would not have, if I, if you asked me to put together the things on this plate that you had thought of for each item, I wouldn't have been like, oh yeah, that like camembert looking cheese is definitely going to go with the pickled carrots, <laughs> but it works. It's so, it, I totally get the bon me vibe. Yeah. That's one thing that I love about working here is that I feel like I like surprise people every day with the stuff that they can do with cheese, <laughs> like between like all the different recipes and just like pairing recommendations and stuff. Like, you know, you think of cheese and you're just like, oh, like I'll just eat it with a cracker. But really there's so many different opportunities out there for cheese. <laughs> Even just the like, you're using the cracker as the palate cleanser. I was like, oh, the cheese goes on the cracker. <laughs> oh, just the palate cleanser. I like that. Any other questions before we move on? Awesome. So this next cheese I am very, very excited about because this is one of my favorite cheeses ever, the Humboldt Fog. And I was very disheartened <laughs> when I was reading the book. And um, one person talks about this cheesemonger who was a very snotty guy. Um, and he referred to Humboldt Fog being tasted like it sold at Walmart. <laughs> Lily really was so offended. <laughs> I was like, how dare he talk about that cheese like that? And I'm so happy that my buddy Joe backed me up and said that, this is the quote from the book, I already knew enough to know that dismissing Humboldt Fog so savagely was like proudly shit talking the Beatles. And I'm so glad that <laughs> it stuck up for me because this is one of my favorites. I love it so much. And so Humboldt Fog is a goat's milk cheese made by Cypress Grove out in California from one of the OG goat ladies, Mary Keene. This creamery was started in 1983, around the same time that Vermont Creamery was starting up. Um, and Mary <laughs> got into this because she lured goats from her neighbor's house and then just realized that she had a lot of milk and not much to do with it, so decided to make cheese. So she took an internship in France, um, just like Alice did as well and then came back to the United States bursting with ideas. The cheese Humboldt Fog actually itself came to her in a dream on her flight back from France. And the ash line in the cheese reminded Mary of the fog that comes over the Humboldt County coastline every morning. So just like Moses Sleeper, this is also a soft ripened cheese, a bloomy rind cheese, um, but Cypress Grove's important. Cypress Grove incorporates vegetable ash, which is the line that you see through the middle and also what creates like the blackish hue around the rinds. So vegetable ash in cheese making actually came from the practice of protecting curds overnight from insects and other pests like way, way, way back before like refrigeration or anything. Now it's really just aesthetically pleasing and also helps with acidity levels in the cheese. Um, and with goat's milk, that's 
really important because it calms that overwhelming goatiness that a lot of people typically associate with goat cheese. I personally love the barnyardiness of goat cheeses. That's why this is one of my favorites. So again, like get the smell of the cheese. It has like that typical goaty, almost like ammonia-y smell to it, but like that nice lactic clean scent. And then you'll take a bite and enjoy like a nice like buttermilk, fresh cream, complemented with floral notes, little herbaceous overtones and a clean citrus finish. So this one is for being such like a simple goat cheese, it has a lot of complexities to it. And that's what I love so much about it. And the citrus finish to me just like blows my mind. <laughs> now, oddly enough, the first time I ever sampled Humboldt Fog was at a Whole Foods. So going <laughs> back to the book, it's just one of those cheeses that's everywhere. But I fell in love with it like Lily. It's one of my favorite cheeses. The coolest thing I thought about this cheese ever since I first met this cheese is the cream line. So that really decadent, gooey cream line that is right inside the rind. Once you sit and let that get to room temperature, it just melts in your mouth. It is, it's just such a beautiful cheese to look at and to eat. Yeah, yeah. So if you see in our little picture here on the slide, um, or even on the wedge in front of you, if you haven't eaten the whole thing yet, um, you have the nice like chalky interior, which is like your typical chev texture. Um, and because this is such a tall cheese, to age that interior takes a long time. So that's why the cream line develops around the outside because that just gets broken down a lot faster than the interior. So now you can take a bite of the cheese with the dried pear. And this pairing just blows my mind because the creaminess of the cheese with like the granularity of the dried pear reminds me of that like line on a pie where like the moist interior is melding with like the really dry crust. And we were trying to think of like the scientific term for that, but like, we couldn't come up with that. that? <laughs> the part of the pie where it's like moist and it's touching the crunchy part, but we've discovered there's no word for that. So, so but we taste that. <laughs> so take your sample. And again, you guys can unmute and make questions or comments or ask, ask us anything. Lily's gonna eat her whole piece of cheese before we move on. I love Humboldt. <laughs> I, I was just gonna ask like how that cream line developed, but that's interesting, like it, um, based on the aging. Um, and I'm assuming like like cheese like cheese makers can control how much of that cream line they want. So it just depends on like the stage of aging. So a okay. very very young. Humboldt fog will have no cream line and then just as you let it you know like sit on the shelf longer either like in the actual aging room or even like here at the cheese shop like if we have Humboldt fog for, for you know a couple weeks or something it'll start to even like you know break down more so it's really cool you could even age it in your fridge like <laughs> you could buy a piece and if you want more cream just let it sit there a few more weeks <laughs> and you'll notice the cheese will develop new flavors as it sits and gets a little bit older so young cheeses versus them sitting in your fridge for a little while will taste different hi i just i just wanted to say that lily thank you for the wine pairing <laughs> the um uh the uh i ended up going with the cloudy day Sauvignon Blanc for the first few cheeses. It is excellent. I read the book. I'm not quite on board with all the smelling and tasting, but I'm going, I will be there. <laughs> so and thank you. This is, this is so much fun. Thank you. So you know, and I just want to say, I come to your shop often in the humble fog. You guys introduced me to it. It's my favorite cheese ever. <laughs> <laughs> I was so my girlfriend brought over. I was like, <gasps> I was like, you have humble fog. I was like, ah. <laughs> and I, I live two minutes away from you guys, so oh, I, I buy gifts for people. <laughs> I'm like, no, this is it. I'm, I was meant to become a cheese <laughs> curd <laughs> nerd. Curd nerd, yes. Can we can we make shirts that say curd nerd? Yes, please. <laughs> I was surprised at how funny the book is because I thought I'm like, oh, so he's gonna talk about these. It's hysterical. Yes, it's, so it's funny. really funny. 
<laughs> yeah, we thought the same thing. We were thinking, okay, a book about cheese. How interesting could that be? But it was hysterical. He's super witty and it just, it made it a fast read. It was a great book. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I know. I just got it and I'm almost done with it. So. Awesome. I think this book is hysterical. I think it just is. Hi, girls. Hi. <laughs> I think this book is hysterical. I think you did a great job at tagging everything that goes right along with it. Verbatim, in order, you did a great job. You made it local, you made it easy, and you made it for all of us who are just trying to uh, come around to things. Great job. Thanks, Rainy. <laughs> All right, well, we're, we're moving along here. We've got two more cheeses to go. All right, so um, as you guys learned in the book, the top three cheese producing states in the U.S. are California, Vermont, and Wisconsin. So, so far we've covered California and Vermont, and now we're going to explore a cheese that comes out of Wisconsin. So next up on our tasting plate is called the Moon Rabbit. Um, the Moon Rabbit is made from Deer Creek in Wisconsin, and it's made out of pasteurized cow's milk. Deer Creek prides itself on sustainability. They actually started their operation back in 2010 in response to an international demand for high quality, high consistency cheese from America. And this really was the, the kickoff when Rogue Creamery, um, again from the book, when they won World's Best Cheese, this really sparked excitement throughout the world for American-made cheese. To this day, Deer Creek excels in consistency and high quality. Founder Chris Gentine believes that food should be enjoyed, not just simply eaten. And we highly tend to agree with that. The Moon Rabbit is actually part of Deer Creek's animal series. So this is a collection of handmade artisan cheese with whimsical hand-drawn labels like the one that you see here, uh, unique stories and award-winning flavor. Chris Gentine recalls a story that his grandma used to tell him when he was a little boy that the moon was made out of green cheese. And as an adult, he thought that was a really cool idea and he decided to go ahead and make a green cheese. If you hold your piece of moon rabbit under the right light, you're going to notice that it has a very light mint green hue to it. So this cheese actually gets bathed in a green chartreuse liqueur. And that green chartreuse liqueur not only imparts that really unique color in the cheese, but it also infuses it with an herbal bouquet of flavor. So let's go ahead and take a sample of the moon rabbit. Again, smell the cheese first. Now that it's at room temperature, you really should pick up on some of those citrusy herbal notes. And you're gonna go ahead, put the cheese in your mouth, let it sit on your tongue for a little bit, warm up, and you might pick up hints of clove, citrus, rosemary, and even thyme. All right. I have to take my sample too. <laughs> even though I've already eaten all these cheeses many times. <laughs> have to partake. Okay, next we are going to take a nibble of the moon rabbit with its accompaniment, which is the orange zest fig salami. Now because the moon rabbit really has these inherent flavors of citrus and, and these herbal notes, it lends itself exceptionally well to being paired with things that are citrusy in flavor. So we found that pairing it with the orange fig jam that we have in the shop, um, this orange zest fig salami, it just works really well with the cheese and really magnifies those herbal citrus notes that are inherent in the cheese. When I first sampled the moon rabbit with the fig salami together, I thought that it tasted like a citrus or orange infused fig newton. So that chewiness of the fig salami and the softness of the cheese, it just kind of spoke fig newton to me for some reason. Um, yeah, and if one other thing, if there's any uh, beer drinkers on the call here, the moon rabbit 
again, because it pairs well with citrus, goes especially well with Blue Moon Belgian Ale. So if you have a Blue Moon in the summertime with that nice wedge of orange on the side, this would be a good snacking cheese to go with that beer. Okay, guys, moving along. Sig Newen. <laughs> Are you reading Sig Newen? Yes, Sig Newen. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what a great combination. <laughs> and it's really cool. Like we were seeing earlier, you know, depending on what you pair the cheese with, it's, it's going to taste different every time. Mm -hmm. So different flavors and even texture will absolutely change the taste and the complexity of whatever cheese you're pairing it with. So that's why we love pairings. It's, it is a different experience every time. It's, it's a really, really neat thing. All right. So you might recall a cheese from the book uh, that Joe mentioned on several occasions called Rogue River Blue. Uh, as Joe explains in the book, this cheese was single-handedly responsible for making people all around the world fall in love with American cheese. Um, Rogue River Blue won Best Cheese in the World in the 2019-2020 World Cheese Awards that's held in Bergamo, Italy. And this was mind-blowing. And American cheese never even came close to doing something like this. So this really ignited a fire in people that we've got to try this American cheese. So uh, since unfortunately the 2021 version of um, Rogue Creamery's Rogue River Blue is not yet available, we've graced your tasting plate with another dreamy auction from Rogue Creamery. Our final pairing for tonight just so happens to be my favorite pairing on the plate. So let me introduce you to Smoky Blue. This cheese is made with um, pasteurized cow's milk and a vegetarian rennet. Each wheel of this cheese receives a long, gentle pulse smoking over Oregon hazelnut shells. So this really adds to the cheese's terroir. As Lily talked about a little bit earlier, terroir is a concept that basically says that cheese and even wine are influenced by their geographical location. So again, we like to think of this as taste of place. So let's go ahead, close your eyes, and I really want you to breathe in those campfire aromas before enjoying your sample of Smoky Blue. <laughs> yes. And again, to me, this just, it smells like a campfire. Mm. So good. So go ahead, put the cheese in your mouth, let it melt, and you're gonna just let it sit on your palate. It will express sweet cream flavors, caramel notes that are gonna be very well balanced with those earthy, smoky tones, and just that, that hint of roasted nut. It's, a, it's an exceptional cheese. This is probably, we were talking before the call about favorite cheeses. This is probably one of my favorite blue cheeses that we sell in the store. I just, I, I love it so much. Smoky Blue is actually the first of its kind in the world. It was inspired by a chef and it truly speaks Oregon. Next, I'm going to invite you to sample this cheese alongside the crunchy hazelnut that's covered in chocolate. And this particular hazelnut actually comes from Ash Creek in Oregon. I want you to try those two together. And for me personally, I feel as though somebody got crazy on this campground and stuck a piece of candy bacon into their s'more. This combo to me tastes like a bacon s'more. And I've never had a bacon s'more, but now that I came up with this concept, I'm going to make one and it just sounds amazing. That's insane, it tastes so good. <laughs> it tastes like Christmas. I love oh, that. Yes. Like why, I feel like the toasted nuts and the fire, like the campfire that you were talking about, Jamie, like it just evokes holiday to me. It's so good. It's both like, I fully agree because it's like kind of spicy. 
but also the like um chocolate covered hazelnut really like pulls out the caramel in the cheese yeah. so like very very christmasy yeah that's how i would put it yeah, yeah christmasy yes Mm -hmm. all right everybody well in terms of cheese unfortunately that's all we have for you tonight but we wanted to open it up to any questions or comments or socializing with us that you guys wanted to do and otherwise we the will caramel popped in that the caramel popped in that last flavor burst it was incredible yes great ching yes I, I agree too and also the cooper and thief cabernets went excellent with that yes so blue cheeses and those very robust red wines mm -hmm. are an awesome pairing so even if you're into any kind of dessert right. wine as well those go really really nice with blue cheeses I think I died and went to heaven. I just, this is like, I have not oh, had this much fun. <laughs> I read the book, so I know what, like, your references to the book, and I've been to your shop, so I'm like, I'm like, they're doing a virtual thing? This is great. Thank you so much. This is really great. Joining us. Yeah, we want to do more of these. We already started thinking of more ideas and, and we're, we're going to get very creative. We want to do pairings that aren't even necessarily book pairings with cheese books. So I'm reading a book right now that's more of a page turner thriller type book and I'm coming up with ideas of how I'm going to pair cheese with this book. <laughs> how, how, about, about how about cheese in art? Yes. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, you know, painting cheese. that and I mean, I don't know. Just something out there. It's just fun. This is just wonderful. Thank you so much. I truly enjoyed it. So no, this is great. Thank this you guys so much. Everybody up Thank you so much for joining us and spending time with us tonight. We love doing this as much as you love attending the event. So th this is very, very fun. Yeah, thank you guys thank all for, you. for joining us. This was great. And yeah, we will definitely have to do more cheese and book pairings uh, mm -hmm. with mysteries, thrillers. That sounds really interesting. Bestsellers. Art, I love I love cheese and art. That's a great, I mean, the, uh, the possibilities are endless, guys. Exactly. Yeah. You, you can pair anything everything. with cheese, so. <laughs> That's and right. And becoming a cheese head. <laughs> 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 it's okay. And I'm okay with it. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is <laughs> this is not the string cheese you buy. Right? Oh, ma'am, it is not string cheese. <laughs> what was everyone's favorite? Can we go around and say our favorite cheeses of the evening? Uh, yeah, what did people like tonight? So my favorite new cheese is the Moses Sleeper. That was so good. I loved that. But the humble fog is like, <laughs> like still your favorite. still my favorite. But <laughs> Moses Sleeper, I'm coming in, I'm coming in. I'm gonna get some Blue Moon and some Moses mm -hmm. Sleeper. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I found a new love. <laughs> I found a new love for humble fog. Okay. Humble <laughs> fog here also and smoky <laughs> blue. Smoky blue. Have all smoky Smoky blue is and and with the Cooper mm. and Thief. Yes. You know, I must like more assertive tastes or flavors. That's like use that word to just name. you know, assertive. And I'm like, yeah, maybe I like more assertive. <laughs> this is just so much fun. My favorite was the moon rabbit. Moon Rabbit, I think, because I like cheddars a lot. So yes. it's very good. It was I did like that too? That was very good. In fact, I broke into that last night when I came home. I'm like, that looks so good. I'm like, no, <laughs> I have to save it. That's the danger of getting the platter too early. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yum! And I opened it. Of course, I was showing my friends, and they're like, oh, as they reach, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I think my favorite was the Humboldt Fog. 
I, I was not expecting it to be so complex, but I like it just burst in my mouth. I got like a chalkiness, like that ash kind of like it was wow. Sold. <laughs> I'll say that my favorite was the one that I was eating at the time. I can't make up my mind which one because whatever was going in my mouth at the time was my favorite. <laughs> understandable it's like a mother talking about her children they're all my favorite <laughs> does anyone have any questions for lily and jamie before we wrap up this evening anything that you were thinking about we do have a question um from our behind the scenes moderator um how do you uh earn the title world's best cheese yeah, not easily. Um, <laughs> this cheesemonger, you know, world and these competitions that are held and these awards programs are incredibly intense. And some of this was touched upon in the book. And they, I mean, these judges look at everything. I mean, it's it goes well beyond just tasting the cheese, the consistency of it, the aging of it, the, I mean, the color of it, the texture. And it, it, it's got to be just perfect and most of us will never have the the palate and the you know the means to be able to award a cheese the best cheese in the world but there are people out here that do this for a living and um yeah I mean Roe Creamery winning that award was huge because like Lily explained in the beginning of the presentation America was not even on the map for cheese I mean this this is a new thing here right it's been going on in Europe for a long, long time. So I also think he, he was surprised that he won. He didn't even know. He was like shocked that he won. He submitted it. And I think if I remember, if that's the one from the book, I'm not sure. Could have been this other one. I did put in my request to get notified immediately when the 2021 version becomes available. So <laughs> fingers crossed, we're going to have it here in the shop. I know, uh, so Michelle got a couple of wine recommendations from you guys behind the scenes, it seems, um, which I'm sure you're always happy to do for customers when they walk into the shop, but could you maybe uh, give us a few wine recommendations? Should we purchase, purchase these cheeses again? Yeah, absolutely. And one thing that you guys should know is that every cheese that we sell in the shop is listed on our website. So if you go to the top right hand corner of our website, there's a button that says shop spread. And you can search within that area and it will show you every single cheese that we have. And if you click on a cheese that you're interested in, the next page will show you all the tasting notes on the cheese, as well as the, you know, science and what kind of rennet is used, pasteurized, not pasteurized, um, but it also gives pairings. And we try to pick a wine and a beer for every single cheese. Um, so this particular platter, for some reason, all the cheeses really lend themselves to that refreshing white wine type of beverage. Um, so I had told, I talked to Michelle and a few others, so that Prosecco would be a really nice choice as well as a Sauvignon Blanc, especially with those citrusy notes and the Moon Rabbit and the Humboldt Fog that really lends itself well to a white wine. Um, again, blue cheeses, you will never go wrong pairing a blue cheese with a dessert wine or a very robust red. So like one of those really juicy Zinfandels uh, something very bold that, that will go very nice with a blue cheese. Um, and the more delicate cheeses, you know, those you just want to, again, like a delicate wine. So uh, triple creams, we always recommend doing a champagne with a triple cream that the bubbles and the effervescence will, you know, kind of get the, uh, the creaminess on your tongue, you know, moving and the flavor is just really, really magical. Um, but yeah, you can look up any cheese on our website and get those tasting notes and wine pairings and, and beer pairings as well. Oh, that's great. That is good to know. Yeah. Because I know I've asked when I've been over there, I'm like, I got this bottle of this. And immediately you guys give me suggestions and it always works. Yeah. But again, I'm still, I'm still becoming knowledgeable. <laughs> <laughs> it's a process. We have a hard job over here having to eat all this cheese and then drink wine yeah. and figure out what goes with what. Yeah, I bet, I bet that really sucks, huh? <laughs> <laughs> everybody looks, every time I'm over there, everybody looks really happy. <laughs> 
which is a good thing. I mean, you know, that's a good thing. So. Any other questions, comments? Awesome. Well, thank you guys all for coming tonight. Lily, Jamie, thank you for pairing up with us to do this awesome, awesome event. I am definitely going to be first in line for the next event and uh, making sure that my, my trees box is on order. Um, this was awesome. And I'm so excited to hear that you guys have all read the book and that you're excited to do more events like this as well. So Thank you for joining us for our first inaugural uh, cheese tasting and book pairing event. You can uh, visit Spread Cheese in Main Street Market or visit them on their website. The link is in the chat box. Uh, you can visit Wesley and RJ Julia on Main Street in Middletown um, and shop all of our cheese books and cookbooks and, and wine pairing books as well. Um, and we hope to see you in the store very, very soon.